Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Um... What makes up someone's personality? How do we behave, think, and feel? An important part of each individual's personality and decision-making process is a conscience. The metaphorical angel and devil on your shoulders. A common way of illustrating how each person has a light and a dark side. But how does our conscience influence our decisions? And is it really so black and white? According to Sigmund Freud, it is. But we just don't know it. Freud was a renowned psychologist who, among many other accomplishments, created and utilized the psychodynamic approach, an approach characterized by describing personality as the summation of the needs, strivings, and desires of ourselves as individuals that exist outside of the realm of awareness. According to Freud, our personalities are formed by forces within our own mind that we cannot appreciate. We have a dynamic unconscious. If Freud is to be believed, within each individual is a struggle to control the forces within ourselves. Such forces are the results of a lifetime of powerful memories, primal instincts, and often nefarious desires. These forces are outside of our control because they operate outside of our conscious desires, and they can be terrifying. Wishing death on others is often a characterization of Freud's proposed primal unconscious, such a seemingly simple thought like, I wish that my sister would just die, can originate from our unconscious mind. Thankfully, such impulses are believed by some to remain in the unconscious, because they are too overpowering for us. However, according to Freud and the psychodynamic approach, these same impulses, combined with our desires, our conscious desires, can together form our personality. Freud believed that the mind consisted of three basic systems, the id, the ego, and the superego. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight was an Oscar-winning movie released in 2008, following the story of Batman, Harvey Dent, and the Joker. The plot takes place in Gotham City, a crime-ridden metropolis who's trying to turn a corner and free itself from the clutches of the mob. Batman functions as the city's vigilante protector, who operates outside the law common good of the city. His troubled past gives him a dark side, and hence his grim demeanor and appearance. However, his character is a balance of the darkness he has to adopt to fight crime, and the struggle to stay a hero. Harvey Dent is the virtuous district attorney who works within the law from a moral high ground to fight crime in Gotham. His rosy outlook contrasts with Batman's drab cynicism, and his hopefulness only supports his position as the White Knight of Gotham City. The Joker, on the other hand, is the chaotic villain whose only goal is to cause death and anarchy wherever he goes. To quote Alfred, Batman's butler, from the movie itself, Good sport, because some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. These three characters, with their three different personas, embody the three systems Freud proposed comprise the human mind. Harvey Dent is the superego. He acts as the righteous, law-abiding citizen that functions as the arm of noble peace and justice in the system. Harvey's principles come from cultural and societal standards for good behavior, and his actions reflect a respect for authority. In this case, it is respect for the authority of the law. Batman, the morally gray and anti-hero of the movie, personifies the ego. 
His character is the result of a wicked world forming the hard exterior of a man who is not afraid to operate outside of a pure righteous morality to achieve a practical goal of saving the city. Batman's sacrifice of his reputation and body are synonymous to the reality principle associated with Freud's ego. The reality principle states that the ego operates according to a delay in gratification to achieve real world objectives. The movie itself tells the story of Batman's sacrifice. The Joker, on the other hand, is the chaotic hurricane who seeks to undermine all authority and promote anarchy by killing and terrorizing the populace. His motives are nothing less than malevolent, and he will do anything to anyone to achieve his ends. In fact, his motivations can even change in an instant, setting him down completely different pathways because he sees one as being more fun than another. The Joker operates according to the pleasure principle, which stipulates that immediate gratification is the sole objective for one's impulses. His insanity dominates his persona, and his ceaselessly aggressive and merciless actions make him a chaotic tyrant vying for control, or more accurately, destruction, of the moral code of Gotham City. The plot of The Dark Knight centers around the fight for the soul of Gotham City, a fight for the morality of its citizens, whether they would return to their crime-ridden past, or move beyond it, and beyond fear of Gotham's villains. Harvey Dent and Batman work together and are successful in cleaning up the streets of Gotham for a while before the Joker is hired by the mob to remedy the situation. Despite the Joker's success in killing off many of Gotham's prominent citizens, his motivations soon become clear. He's only working for himself and his own ends. He only wants to see chaos and prove that Gotham is just as twisted as he. He is eventually thwarted by Batman, but not before corrupting Harvey Dent by killing his fiance. Batman's victory is equivalent to the ego keeping the superego and id in check. Batman is the tip of the iceberg, whose practicality and balance allow him to deflect the inner demons of the Joker's chaotic temptations, as well as balancing the moral high ground that resulted in dense corruption. Part of Batman's strengths spur from his defense mechanisms. Defense mechanisms, according to Freud, allow the ego to reduce anxiety from unacceptable impulses. Repression and identification play huge parts in the development of Batman's persona. Repression of his parents' deaths allow him to fight crime unthwarted and even motivated by their loss, without feeling the pain on a crippling level. Identification makes up Batman's entire outer appearance. He was terrified of bats as a child, and thus became Batman, unconsciously identifying bats as a terrifying animal and then projecting this terror on his foes. The movie ends with Batman protecting the city from the Joker, and his repression of his inner demons, and his example as a realistically moral citizen serve as an example to the people of Gotham. The ego keeps the id at bay.